Hey everyone, Tom Hanks here to present to you a very special episode of the podcast today. Today's episode is a big one, pun intended. Whether you live in the burbs or Philadelphia, you won't want to miss our interview with Wes Archer and boy is he in a league of his own. Now just to warn you, the audio in today's episode is a little sullied. Eight times it might sound extremely loud and incredibly close. But it's worth it. You definitely don't want to miss this episode. If you do, it will leave you sleepless in Seattle or anywhere else. Now cast away any doubt you might have and enjoy the episode. I'm gonna run to catch the episode and I want you to catch me if you can. But you won't be able to catch me because I'm a really fast runner. Okay, enjoy. Bye. Blink, blink, ding, bling. Ding, 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 <laughs> no, I am too. It's fine. Is it on the right microphone? Ah, well, no. <laughs> ah, that's not good. Tell us. Uh, uh, go to that one. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Perfect. Uh, nope. Yeah, see? Very good. See? Very good. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm going to pull up uh, the episodes. Yes. Good idea. Those really helped me. I have some notes. Christ. Let's get this movie off. That's what I'm gonna do. We can do that. Nothing. Be on chair. Is he in here? <laughs> oh man. I guess she'll be. Go pee right now. Just do it. Okay. Okay. He's here. Is he there? He's, he's in the waiting room. <laughs> mm-hmm. ah! <laughs> hey! Hello? Hello? What? Hey, can you hear me? What's that? This moment. <laughs> You're freezing. Am I freezing? No. Okay. Pass, pass, pass. You're animated again. Oh, you froze oh, again. Here. Jackie, you look like a scary ghost. Amy looks... Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah, hold on. Can you hear us? Yeah, you're cutting out a little bit. Oh, I don't think you can hear us. Yes, oh, yes, I hear you. Ah, all right. You know what? My volume was turned all the way down. Oh, God. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm good. Yeah? How are y'all doing? You made it through the storm. Yeah, that was insane. It came out of nowhere. <laughs> we had no idea that was happening. <laughs> I had blood all on, on me. Okay. What happened? Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> with the cat again. I, I fully assumed it was from something else. I, yeah. I assumed it was not your blood. Uh, yeah, it's not food. <laughs> what have you been doing? The last time we talked to you was November 2019. How have you been doing? I am great. Yeah, <laughs> good. Been making banana breads? I have been leveling up in the kitchen, um, working at home. We're all working at home. Um, mm-hmm. Rick and Morty forever i love it it's a great show you should watch yes. it <laughs> yeah, oh yeah what do you guys you guys are on season five right now right well um i'm six i'm drawing six right now okay they're, they're writing seven okay. i've been back in color cartoon network just released wow. the trailer for season five and um it looks great season five is up it's gonna be awesome um so yeah i'm doing good i've been um, you know a lot of a lot of time at home but i use that time to do some painting and you know i, I like to to you know practice to that and uh keep that going and um and meeting a little something of my own for my youtube channel that's kind of on the back cool. of um yeah check it out it's archermation and uh i just got my first shot my vaccine shot but it, like for a week my like my mouth tasted like it had a metallic taste sort of oh weird. interesting it was, it was really weird like coffee tasted almost like poop it was it was pretty bad oh no what the fuck 
And I love coffee. Yeah, for sure. What a terrible side effect. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's got to be a really rare one because I haven't heard that one. Um, unless <laughs> I looked it up, it's, uh, like somebody was moving in your coffee. <laughs> it's a, it was like ten percent of people get that. Like they have nickels in their mouth. Yeah, who told you that? They're like, they're like, yeah, it tastes like somebody pooped in your coffee. No, oh, <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I was wondering is um, a, a topic that comes up a lot on the podcast is, and I don't know why, but uh, just the subject of cannibalism. <laughs> we were just curious what what your thoughts were on it, and uh, what would it take to get you to eat a person? Did that really come up on the show? I don't remember. Like with Dale, it weirdly comes up a lot <laughs> on our podcast, not on the show. We oh, just yeah. <laughs> we just like to add it in there for fun. We, yeah. I mean, it just naturally comes up. I have a whole process of how I would eat Amy. Right. Uh, Feet and hands first. Anyway, you don't have to answer that right now. <laughs> you just think about it. It's one of those things where at first you're just like, that's crazy. And then the more you think about it, you're like, well, well, if you're, if I had to, putting me in well, a position where. It depends on, I guess, who it was. I don't know. See? Thanks. Right? Okay. I don't who think it was that. and I really the situation. I never... It's a complicated situation. <laughs> you can't just answer yes or no. Right. <laughs> yeah. hmm. We'll come back to that. You can think about it while we're talking about season three. You can think about who you would love to eat. Or at least <laughs> wouldn't make me <laughs> Someone attractive, but that that you disliked. <laughs> who, who That's what I said. <laughs> you know, like some like famous actress or something. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a horrible. Guess who I ate? <laughs> <laughs> and I've never felt more alive. It's like a, a really messed up version of like what eight seven degrees uh, separation from Kevin Bacon. Only you're like, but I ate Kevin Bacon and oh. I made bacon out of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> And his last name is Bacon. It is. No, it's like he's begging okay. to be eaten. <laughs> Betty Sizzles, too. Betty Sizzles, just. <laughs> now, so what was the Growing thing? up in, in Texas, we, ne we never ate people. Um, so, like I say, we didn't eat much barbecue either. But we did what? eat uh, pretty well. I'm more surprised about the barbecue. I oh, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we didn't eat much barbecue. It's weird. It's very weird. What are some uh, Texas, like, if someone was going to be like, what food represents... Texas for you, what would you say? Because here in North Carolina, it's like obviously there's pulled pork and mm -hmm. um, just yeah. a lot of like rice stuff. Yeah, it would be steak. Ooh. Oh, yes. Okay, there you go. Did you eat a lot of steak? Yes. Okay, all right. Yes, just not barbecue steak. Is that um, a thing? That might not even be a thing. <laughs> Is that thing like. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it might be. Maybe in some like Korean restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steak, though. Uh, yeah. Steak means jobs. Steak, okay, also makes me think of, I'm trying to get a bit to King of the Hill, but it makes Good luck. <laughs> steak also makes me think of, so, okay, so we're talking about season three, right? And in this season, we have this amazing episode called, and they call it Bobby Love, mm. where he eats the 72 ounce steak to spite his vegetarian, uh, quote unquote, girlfriend. It wasn't his girlfriend, but poor Bobby's 12 years old and he doesn't know. So <laughs> it's a revenge steak. It's a revenge steak. It's much more innocent. What? I just so wanted to talk about that. Is that, is that, and they call it Bobby Love? That's right. That's right. Jeremy, did Kevin okay. Adlon win an Emmy for that? I don't remember. I can't remember. This, this, this season, we did win the Emmy. Okay. Yeah. You know, we're so we're doing our season three week recap with you, and um, we, we, we're trying to do a season recap every time we finish one, right? So season three was several months ago at this point, but we're just now <laughs> you know, we're about to do with it. the holidays the and holiday. the holidays okay. and all that stuff, you okay. know. Okay. Push that that, that confused me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That so, makes sense. Yeah, it does. So I, I, I don't know. I wanted to talk to you. I want to talk to you about this season because we have that amazing death and taxes episode where apparently they took your likeness for a murderer. Death in Texas. It's taxes. Tell yeah. her it's Texas. It's Texas. Death in Texas. Yes! Oh, <laughs> motherfucker! <laughs> God damn it. You know, I kept thinking that I had it right. I guess I didn't. <laughs> That's part of your charm. <laughs> Sorry, well, no, I wanted to talk about it with Wes because I want to know, what was the inspiration behind you being the prisoner? Yeah, how did that come about? That, was that your suggestion? I just like they knew about, about my troubled past with the law yeah. or if they just thought my name sounded cool, or if it was my brother Martin, who's a little more dangerous than me, kind of a biker. Oh. He's got like one foot in the biker world and one foot in the animation world. Oh. And uh, yeah, I probably like uh, seem kind of threatening to a writer or something, I can imagine. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, um, anyway, 
Yeah. Um, so I was arrested for the first time when I was, I think, in third grade for shoplifting. <laughs> wow. And uh, this was at Target. And uh, okay, look, this is my, this is my my friend that kind of led me astray here, but. They sure. freaking uh, so, so so okay so I stole uh, hang ten fuzzy feet I don't know if you know what those are some stickers or something fuzzy feet yeah you, you like they like hang ten feet and they're fuzzy and you peel off the sticker and stick them to your wall and the feet are like going up the wall you know so we rode our bikes to Target okay <laughs> way, and uh, there's some woods there's with a path through the woods to Target so we get in there and and he's like look you know this is how you shoplift so I started shoplifting with him and and then like one of their uh, undercover shoppers. Uh, caught us and we hightailed it out, out of the store and got on our bikes and we were um, riding our bikes around the Target store to get to that trail to go back to the woods when this car like like does it and this this like Cutlass you know 1969 Cutlass or whatever it was like mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, guns his car in front of us right as we're about to get to the woods and blocks our entrance right and and so this guy like detains us and they take us to this little room and this uh we're like, we have to write out a confession uh, for this lady who had a big beehive hairdo and she was chewing gum. And she every time she, like, Ooh, cool. she'd be chewing gum and making those little bubbles and then like pop the bubble, you know, like chew, yeah. chew, 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 snap, chew, 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 Such chew. Such a power chew. move. It is a power move. Yeah, kind of thing. <laughs> and, and so we wrote out confessions and they freaking called the cops and the cops came and took us to jail and put us in a oh cell and, and called uh, our mothers to pick us up. And then, um, <laughs> So we're stealing fuzzy feet. I, yeah, and and look, I, I had really bad luck with the law growing up. So next time I was arrested was in junior high school for weed, and the, this was the 1970s, right? Weed was everywhere, and we were emulating the older cool kids and all this stuff. Then I got arrested in high school, first time for uh, trying to buy beer with a fake ID, oh. and my friend has weed in his glove box. Oh, double whammy! So that's three. The fourth time was. Um, <laughs> We, uh, me and another friend, we dined and ditched. We we went. We had nachos oh. and beer, and and the beer was warm, and the nachos were cold, oh. and, and, and that pissed us off. So we left without paying. And the security guard caught us, and the Houston police were right there, and they took us to jail and had to stay overnight in jail. It was awful. And um, that one I kind of understand. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. Uh, but um, <laughs> and then the last time, I was. Um, I was driving my car to Dallas from Houston, and um, I was going super fast. And I had some empty, there were some empty beer bottles in the back seat on the floorboards. And the cop was trailing me, but I had loud music going, so I didn't see the cop trailing me. So when, uh, when he pulled, up, pulled me over, I finally saw him, and I pulled over, and um, I reached behind my back to pull out my wallet, because okay. I'd never been pulled over by a cop, and when I did that to pull out my wallet, he drew his gun on me and oh, hit down. So I, I hit the ground, and um, so, um, you know, that was the end of that the night. That sounds terrifying. So, so then I, I never had a gun in like this little oh. county in Texas. So I had to spend the night in jail there, oh, and uh, fortunately, I had money to pay my bail the next day, and um, but I got a taste of the. The, the little jail there in, in Fairfield, Texas, uh, and the guys there trading cigarettes, and you know the store bought cigarettes are more valuable than the hand rolled cigarettes and all that kind of the jail economy kind of thing going on in there. Um, and they booked me for um, evading arrest and DUI. But oh my God! They did not administer a DUI test to me, and I was not intoxicated, so um, I. Um, was um, I had to go to court and I had I was put on probation for a year, and so I had to get permission from my probation officer to move to California to go study cartoons. And every month I had to send my little ten dollar check to my probation officer in Texas, <laughs> and I've never been arrested again <laughs> since then. So um, not yet, except for the murder. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I've never been arrested again in real life. Uh, so the next time I was arrested, right. <laughs> I was a cartoon character who had done something horrible <laughs> and um, was, well, that never... <laughs> you know, sent to prison for life, which is much better than, than staying in Texas and maybe I really would have become Wesley Martin Archer. And, you know, who knows? If I hadn't moved to California, I could have stayed in Texas and killed someone.
Oh, you. I mean, at this rate, even if you like got another uh, D, like bogus DUI, you would have been put to death. I mean, you're well past your like three strikes and you're out. Yeah, now. for sure. <laughs> what was the most surprising thing about jail? Um. Well, I didn't find it surprising, really. Okay. <laughs> I was like. Waiting for you to be like, oh, somebody made wine out of their own, oh, like, oh, I, remember or something. One thing. I remember one thing in the Houston jail, this and this was when the Houston cops were really bad, crooked. Um, I saw them uh, with this guy who I suspected they might have been interrogating him. He looked like he was he had been beat up or something. And I didn't, I, I, my feeling was that I didn't know if the cops did that or if he was brought into the station like that. Like, it could have been mm, one of the yeah. other, you know. So interesting. Wow. Well, I'm glad that you've never been arrested again, except for in cartoon form. But I hope you've had the chance to do plenty of cocaine. <laughs> At least. I, I, yeah, I tried that, but once I didn't like it, fortunately. Right. But if I stayed, <laughs> right. No, of course. But, but if I stayed in Texas, maybe I would have liked it. Yeah, I think I was like, this rules. Yeah, if we stayed in Florida, we definitely would have become addicted to opiates. Oh, for sure. 100%. That's yeah, one of those divergent, you, wanna... you know, paths you take in life, the path mm -hmm. not taken, and yeah. <laughs> it, it was wild though. It was a pretty crazy time in Texas in the seventies, and it wasn't that pleasant sometimes. It was very boring, but at the same time, you were you were um, you were pretty free to go run around and do stuff, and you know, just right. have fun and the go outside. And of course, the seventies in general seemed like a crazy time where it was like very uh, traditional and like in some ways, but at the same time, there were like ten serial killers every square block, <laughs> yeah. and every yeah, child yeah. could hitchhike everywhere. Yeah, there was a so, serial killer in Houston around that time. The Candyman? Yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've read a lot of true crime, but that's the about that Because I, I read about that, and it took me like three years to get it out of my brain. Oh, no, no. Like, same, okay, same. No, I'm right there with you. I've read a lot of true crime, but that's like one of the few ones that really stuck with me where I was like, I'm troubled right. by this. I can't even yeah. imagine what happened. I no, we're not talking about it. We're not talking about it. So, but yeah, like, like, we, grew, we grew up in, I grew up in an area where there's literally like the railroad tracks running through the area and the rich part of town was on one side and the poor part of town was on the other side. I was, I was on the wealthy part of town, but we weren't like super wealthy, but um, it seemed like um, everyone kind of had money to spend because the kids around me all had money from their parents and the kids on the other side of the tracks, it seemed like they all had jobs. So, like people still hired oh, yeah. teenagers back then a lot and high school students to work jobs. And it seems like everyone kind of worked and had money. Um, but yeah, like yeah my so like my job my first job i was i think i was still like well no my very first job was paper route when i was like 14 and then wow. at 16 i worked at wendy's and then i i had a job at this pool company i had i worked at a at a nursery a little bit i back at a grocery store and then i drove a delivery truck uh, for a pharmacy um for a while and then uh, i also worked at a silk screening place oh cool uh doing t-shirts that was horrible though oh. <laughs> Uh, hot <laughs> aluminum shack uh, on the other side of the tracks um and it's this gruff like vietnam veteran that worked there but uh hank hill would would definitely be on on like that quarter side of the tracks well you know a stable well-to-do kind of solid blue clap uh, blue blue uh blue collar they they call it absolutely family i don't know why they bother building railroad tracks in any town when it's just so divisive. <laughs> um, so yeah, Hank, Hank grew up in that same time period. You know, maybe he's he'd be like a little older than me. So if they were to do the like the King of the Hill reboot, um, he would be probably like I don't know if he would be retired or still working. He, he might not want to retire. I would imagine. Yeah, my first thought is he would lose like a like a lot of purpose. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He might just keep up with it as a hobby. I don't know. And then Bobby, Bobby would be, you know, 15 years older, is what I read. Um, it, it would be good. It would be a good series. It, I mean, I don't think Lucky and Luann would be there. Well, that that's come up a lot they talking about the movie. Like, oh yeah, they moved yeah. To, you know, they moved to Montana, or you know, Lucky got a job in Alaska, you know, what have you. <laughs> 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 the last time we talked, um, I think we, we mentioned like a possible reboot, like what would happen and all that fun stuff. And um, we talked about Gracie, their daughter, 
uh, Lucky and Luann's yeah. daughter. And yeah. and maybe like Hank and Peggy would have adopted her in some way. She would be the new Bobby character because because if this reboot does happen, there what I'm hearing is that it's going to be like you know 15 years in the future of the last episode. So now, out. right, right. So did you already talk about that? Well, we just it just came up. Oh, okay, sorry, Amy had to go. I, did, I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I have the world's tallest ladder. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so I thought I really like that idea of seeing idea. Pink I, and Peggy. Would, yeah, that would be so great. You know, it makes sense. Like an, almost like another Luann. Yeah, exactly. Another Luann. Right. That's a good idea. That that makes tons. Yeah. Of sense. yeah. That would yeah. be great. So if a reboot was to happen, that would be a good idea. If Right, if every good happen. So what you're saying is that Jackie or I should voice Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> then I should um, write or something. <laughs> you, know, you know everything about the series ever that happened. So that's true. <clears throat> that is true. <laughs> All right. So reboot sounds exciting. We'll see what happens with that. We'll get some more news on it. I don't think it's gonna happen. You <laughs> are you saying that to like nega a reboot? No. Oh. <laughs> I... <laughs> You won't. You won't do it. I dare you. Yeah. <laughs> to whoever. Um, if a reboot did happen, would we look, would we see the characters visibly? Yeah, for sure. I would think. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I'm thinking of uh. Well, what comes to mind for me is at the end of uh, Beavis and Butthead Do America, there's an older couple that look very much like an older Hank and Peggy. Um, and there's a lot of theories that mm -hmm. say that like, oh, that's that's Hank and Peggy. It's in the same universe. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, um, I don't know if you've heard that or... I'd love to see Silver Foss Hank. That sounds amazing. We've been reading a lot of sexy fan fiction about Hank, so... <laughs> so we're, we're very attracted we're to him. We're very into Hank at this point. Yeah. <laughs> that was a wild you know, scene that, the, that, you, that you voiced at the end of the Death and, and Texas episode. <laughs> <laughs> did, did we talk about that? We were, we were still, like, deep into, like, the sexy fan oh, fiction. Oh, the, the whole, uh, <laughs> the part where, like, Hank comes and, uh, Bird hits right. his face. <laughs> That was wild. That was a wild part of that episode. <laughs> it was very hot. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, Hank's Hank's hair would would be a lot different. He, he'd probably have an extra line or two around his eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. those little cheek lines. He could have an additional yep. cheek line under that. Um, like you know, chili. Still kind of look the same. Oh, that'd be so exciting. Yeah. I was wondering if Peggy would have a different hairstyle though. Oh. oh, right. Different hairstyle. Maybe like she dyes her hair too. It'd be like how Judge Judy recently changed her hairstyle. Have you seen what? She like went for like a, a Ruth Bader Ginsburg style. Oh. Um, and it's, it looks great on her. Well, she used to have like the, that bowl cut, right? Yeah. It was, I, I felt like it was a little Peggy like. <laughs> but I can't see Peggy doing like a tiny ponytail. <laughs> He's looking it up. He's writing down all these uh, notes. <laughs> Ginsburg. <laughs> tiny pony. <tail>. Tiny pony. <laughs> Um, oh yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think. Funny uh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Like parted on the side, sort of. But <laughs> now your mind's really going. You know yeah. now that you're thinking about it. We're gonna see the last. reboot. Yeah. We're gonna see the reboot. We're gonna see Peggy with a tiny ponytail and be like, "We did that. Yeah. That was us." <laughs> We're gonna build an entire empire on we we. It was the tiny ponytail's our idea. <laughs> We stole it from Judge Judy. We stole it from Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, you know, you know, you, yeah, maybe, but you'll never be like the person who who actually did the Simpsons yellow. <laughs> now, now that's bragging. My idea. They wanted you green. I said yellow. <laughs> I will take credit no matter what. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna start taking credit for them being yellow. Yeah, <laughs> I invented that. I don't know but... if we could find enough uh, artists to work on that show. Um, I mean, everyone is employed. Well, have you ever heard of Side Hustle? <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll do it. <laughs> Jackie can do it. She's a great artist. Yeah, give me 30 <laughs> years and I'll get one episode done. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> I think with a reboot, talking about a reboot, I am most like excited, mostly ex excited by the idea, but I am most weirded out by the idea of seeing um, like Bobby and maybe Joseph grown up. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, don't know that I want to see Bobby as an adult, mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to see Joseph like a age anymore because it's all only been terrible. I him. feel like Joseph would be so hot. He's got Nancy, who's super hot, and John Redcorn, who's also really hot. That's I mean, true. I'm thinking of weird it's teenage, yeah, puberty Joseph. Puberty but Joseph. He would fill out into a nice John Redcorn. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel? Do you want to see a hot Joseph? I want to see Joseph 
go in a direction that is professional and like way different from his dad, sort of. Like he's got issues with his dad, and he <laughs> become like corporate, like corporate Joseph. Right, uh, right. The total antithesis tor- of yeah, of Dale. Tor- yeah, the antithesis of his dad, and mm-hmm. so they have kind of this weird relationship, being a, like kind of the wild. Well, his dad is the wild guy, and he's he's like got his shit together. He's kind of like, um, well, not like con. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Of, he was like professional, more professional. Hank, kind of like emulating Hank. Yeah, yeah, maybe like he's more like Hank or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that. I never even considered that. I yeah. never even thought about that for Joseph, but that makes a lot of sense. Like, because you know, everybody's kids does the opposite of what their parents do. So why not? Right. right. And then, uh, yeah, Bobby, that could go in a direction that, uh, I don't know. That's. I think that's... he could be like a YouTube star. Oh my God. <laughs> He'd be like this YouTube star. Yeah. A la yeah. Jake Paul, where people kind of love him, but also yeah. hate him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe he's he's more similar to John Raycorn, where he's yeah he's got a band, or he's got a you know a stand up act, or a YouTube mm-hmm. thing going, or he's got he's got a regular job, but he also has a side hustle that he won't give up. It's his passion project. I could see him. I could see him talking to Hank about it. Like I have to put out a video about like whatever, and his, right. Hank's just like, oh god, that's not <laughs> that's not a thing. Right, and Joseph works at Strickland with him. <laughs> I, what I really want to see is that Hank is either the owner of Strickland Propane or he has his own propane company. He needs it. Hank deserves it. He would never, he would never. These are my bucket list wishes for a reboot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Strickland would still be around. Ooh. I know. Would Buck still be around? I don't maybe, know. Yeah, maybe Buck would be in the retirement home. Mm-hmm. He's like this. Hitting on, hitting hitting on, on all the worries. Yeah. <laughs> He's hitting on all yeah, the worries. I was watching something recently about this guy who, um, Oh, I know what it was. I was watching the movie Soul, the the Pixar mm-hmm. movie, and the the lead character, Joe, he's an older guy, but he was still he was a teacher. But he, have you seen the movie? No, no. Okay, so he's a, <laughs> he's a music teacher at a high school, but he's or junior high, and but he's still gigging at night, <clears throat> and his mother is still in his life, and his mother wants him to take this job that has health insurance and the whole nine yards, a stable job. But he he finds his um, life being drawn in towards the, the being a professional musician and, and getting mm-hmm. his big break that way l- later on in his life, like a, being a late bloomer sort of. So Bobby could be that thing where he's he's teaching or he's got got some kind of gig, but he it's not it's not great. He doesn't have um, all the perks or something, and he's still mm-hmm. oh, yeah. he's doing something on the side. I don't know. I could definitely see that. Absolutely. That'd be great. Like a good, good growing opportunity for Bobby. And then he makes it big, but late in life, like Maggie Smith. I mean, he'd have to get a more complicated character. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, character. I don't even want to speculate about like Connie. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that, that Pamela Adlon would do his voice. Yes. I hope so. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Anyways, I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah. Neither do Other we. Than, I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, this is all speculation. All speculation. But it's fun to think about. I love thinking about like the future for all of them. It's exciting yeah, and yeah. scary. I mean, I, I know as much as, as you do about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is nothing. I know. <laughs> um, well. I, I know maybe like one more sentence than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that sentence? I what is that sentence? You can, <laughs> you can, <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you that. All right, all right. Thirsty. You can, uh, <laughs> act it out. <laughs> you just <laughs> rinse it to us. <laughs> yeah. um, if only this mug was filled with whiskey. <laughs> if only. <laughs> What's it filled with? It's decaf. Oh. <laughs> well, at least you won't be up all night. That's true. That's true. So season three. Yes. Season three was like a really good growing season for all of the characters, I feel. Um, Especially Bobby, because Bobby was just kind of like, you know, quiet. He had some kind of funny lines every once in a while in the first and second season, but then he had like quite a few episodes that were like all about him. And and Hank became less hanky. There, I feel like everyone grows. I, I feel like there are so many episodes where Peggy gets, you know, her ego checked a little bit, mm-hmm. including death in uh, Texas. Um, but just, uh, and then the entire season ends with her kind of dying. Almost dying. I know. The first season, the, the, the opening of the season is, is Hank alive. And then the end of it is, is Peggy alive? <laughs> what happened here? Yeah, I don't know. If I had to pick like somebody, 
a one character that grew a lot this season, I would be hard. It would be hard. Everyone kind of grew a lot. Mm-hmm. Was that the plan? Do you think with a with the characters to just kind of like make them grow a lot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, Greg Daniels and and Mike and and the writers all wanted this uh, whole world to to grow, and um, that's what they did. And season three was amazing. Mm-hmm. I know. And season it, four too. See, I, uh, yeah, season four is probably my favorite. I love season three, but season four has some banger episodes. They're so good. Yeah, oh, I, yeah I, I like the one. show after season four, and I really regretted that happened um afterwards like a year later i was thinking yeah, i should have stayed on mm-hmm. and then um yeah this is it was a weird confluence of events that led me to do something else and mm-hmm. when i came back season six i was super happy to be back um but then i heard that or did i come back season seven i forgot I which, don't which, know. Which, which season was the episode where peggy uh and hank met the biker Voice oh, oh we just watched that. Hold on, hold on. They do. Uh, they go to Sturgis, right? Yeah, season yeah, two. <laughs> no, no. Season... We just we just watched it. Hold on, <laughs> Sturgis. Season... Hold on. I'll find it. I'll find it. That I was with uh, uh, Brad Pitt and Jennifer. Well, Jen- yeah, Jennifer Aniston. Oh, which one was King of Queasy Rider, which was two thousand three, and what was that season? We just watched it. It was season seven. We just watched yeah. it for our watch party. It's one. Of, I love that episode. Right. I was gone season five and six and came uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I love that episode. It's great. We watch it for our watch party, and it's just a really good Hank and Peggy episode. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like the later seasons a lot, and um, mm-hmm. I like three I like three and four, and then seven and onwards are yeah. my favorite seasons. One and two were good, but it was kind of try- finding its footing, and mm-hmm. uh, and then I think five and six got a little weird, a little off base. I've heard that. You know, I, I haven't watched season five and six in a long time because as we're doing this podcast, I've just been sticking with whatever we're reviewing. But I can't really remember those seasons and thinking that they were strange, but maybe when we get to them, we'll feel a little differently. I jumped around well, yeah, and I... I Sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. It's a matter of taste. I mean, you know, uh-huh. you, there's no disputing what, what you like. Right. Like it, as you, you know, used to say. But um, the episode where Hank found out, you know, the, all the stuff about Japan and Yankee Stadium, that, that wasn't... That did go over too well with some people. Obviously. I remember that one. Interesting, yeah. That was the one with Castro where yeah, yeah. the yeah. And then after after that, they brought it back to Arlen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love season three. Season three was great. Like you were saying, season one and two definitely like getting the footing, but season three was just like building on what season one and two had already laid down, like the foundation that it laid down. I mean, it was season one and two were so strong. Like I always think, oh, I'm not going to go back and watch those because they were still like, you know, figuring themselves out like any show and then going back and watching it, it was just like, oh, every single episode is like a classic right. episode. It all has like, cla- like, happiness. Happiness. <laughs> Vagina! Just like, there are so many things you're like, oh, I forgot this, I, for- I forgot about this. Um, And so they were already so strong and then building on that, three and four were of course incredible. And I was skipping around recently just watching random episodes and I landed on a couple that were either five or six and I did feel like a difference, like, I don't know, mm-hmm. but but I don't know. We'll see when we get there. We'll like, see. It might not be as noticeable if you're going in order, but like jumping around, I, I felt like I noticed mm-hmm. the difference. Interesting. Yeah, I, 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 I want to watch them in order again. I just, uh, I just gotta make time to do that, you know. Oh. Yeah, you're not a wizard. You can't create time. <laughs> I tell myself that every day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a god. <laughs> you can only do so much. I wish I could create time. <laughs> yeah, but I watch like Jim Cramer and Mad Money, and you know. <laughs> What else do I watch? I watched like um, uh, Colin uh, the sports show in the morning. Oh. Um, I like, have no idea what you're talking about. Howard, uh, Colin Cowherd. The, yeah. uh, you probably don't know the show, but it's just it's a sports show. <laughs> but like in the morning, I don't know if I want to watch King of the Hill in the morning. Like that's yeah. not a big show. Yeah, yeah. I got when you're trying to, to relax. You know, replace Jim Cramer's screaming about stocks. <laughs> I know, God. <laughs> but not like I record it and then I just fast forward to it. I got retirement to think about. I was going to say you're losing your edge, Wes. What happened to the third grader who got arrested? Uh, he wants to be able to like eat when he retires. That's understandable. I I uh, I don't know that. That, I can watch that, that. What? Yeah. What? No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to say I don't know that I could watch uh, King of the Hill in the morning. I'm definitely my three go-to shows in the evening are King of the Hill, of Frasier. <laughs> and Star Trek Next Generation. Incredibly comforting shows where it, and I've heard a lot of people saying like they're watching more King of the Hill now because it's it just reminds them of like regular life mm-hmm. and it's very comforting mm-hmm. um and relatable even to this day. So Yeah. You know, that was actually something that I wanted to ask you was, you know, 
and we've mentioned this before, but it feels like there's this resurgence, right? And I wonder if the pandemic has actually really bumped that up too. I mean, even a reboot being actually considered seems like if it was a year and a half ago, I'd be like, no, that's not going to happen. But now it seems more within grasp because I feel like so many people have had so much time to sit at home and rediscover shows that they really love and re or watch things that they never really considered. We've definitely like, gotten messages from people that are yeah. just like, I just got into this show during the pandemic. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think you hit on something there about real life and relatability and comfort. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Hank is, you know, Hank is the, like the same guy as long as he has like a stable grill <laughs> propane. Um, of course. Um, and there's all this craziness around him. And um, actually, Hank, Hank is maybe deep within his his haircut is crazy. But <laughs> in the universe of Arlen, he's the same guy. Yeah. So he he's very consistent. He did have that uh, psychological blind blind blindness episode when he saw his mother on the yes. kitchen table with that guy. But um, yeah, I love that episode. In, I love it so much. In today's world. <laughs> I think Hank would would be an awesome show to a uh, character to build a show around. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, you have cancel culture, and you have Trumpism, and you have um, you know all this all this stuff going. Dale, Dale would be hilarious. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Especially I, with the pandemic, forget it. <laughs> well, I I've heard people talking. Of course, the subject with oh my god, pol politics and everything. King of the Hill again has been coming up a lot. Like who would who would they vote for, who Hank would vote for, blah, blah, blah. And uh, of course, there's a lot of debate around it. But something that stuck out to me was that uh, uh, somebody was saying, uh, it might have been on uh, an NPR show, they were saying, like, uh, I don't know who Dale would vote for, but he's definitely Q. <laughs> yeah, Dale's Q. From and I was just like, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Hank would never, I don't think Hank would ever vote for Trump. Okay. I didn't want to okay, say thank it. Thank you. But I thank you. Agreed. So many people are so confident yeah. that he would, though. But why do you say that? Why do you say that he wouldn't? Because... He's a narcissistic, weirdo New York guy. Yeah. He's a New Yorker. Very New York. Is, I mean, he does have an element of Buck Strickland, I guess. That is true. Yeah. That, I'm your daddy. Yeah. I'm your daddy. <laughs> yeah. Hank, Hank might like bite the bullet and like maybe he hated Hillary so much or something, but. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah. I thought about that. I was like, uh, he could because he hates <laughs> Hillary so much. He, he get out to the voting booth and start sweating, and, and he, yeah. He, oh, <laughs> yeah. When he checks the box, he just goes blah. He's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> blind. He goes blind. I, I missed. I missed. Peggy, I missed the motorcade. I tried. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure who I voted for. I voted for mayor. I see the thing is that I know, I, like, I agree with you. The whole well, like Hillary so much. Yeah. Would... <laughs> <laughs> What's important never... is the water, the new water bill. <laughs> no, I do. I, yeah, there has been like tons of talk about all of that, about the pandemic and, you know, the uh, election, all of that stuff, it's mainly on Twitter, which we're never really on, but somebody will send us something and we'll look at it and we'll see like this huge discussion about, you know, Hank would not vote for Trump. He would I vote just, for Trump. Uh, and... I just joined Twitter a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. What do you Arthur think? Mason. I'll have to right. try to find those discussions. I, you know, honestly, I, I think I could probably easily say yeah, because, like yeah, we. I mean, I go on it once every month, and I'll see like a couple of things, and then we'll be like, "Oh yeah, King of the Hill." We just never go on it. There's just too many words. Too many words. Not enough pictures. <laughs> I think Bill would vote. Would would have been a Trump voter. Absolutely, one hundred and ten percent. What about Boomhauer? Boomhauer. He would have Boom Boom voted Hillary. I think Boomhauer would have voted for Hillary. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Peggy? Hillary, for sure. Yeah, Hillary. Uh, That's wrong woman? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought, but I didn't want to make any assumptions. Um, So, uh, what would it take for you to eat a person, and would you kill a baby over a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. No judgment. Like, the, if you got trapped in a, a like a backhoe in a pet cemetery and had to dig your way out, you had nothing left what? except the person next to you. What? <laughs> I'm confused. Does the does this baby have horns and a tail? Maybe, maybe. Like, so these are a baby with glowing red eyes and just vomiting <laughs> green projectile. No, it's a regular it's old a, baby. It's a regular, cute, adorable. But you're starving baby. to death, and there's a dog there too. But the dog actually like looks at you like, please don't kill me. But the baby doesn't give you that look because the baby doesn't uh, know it wants right, to. Right, right. I just kill myself. <laughs> Yeah, I was expecting. I was expecting, but that's probably the, the I, more humane one. I, I forgot about. I forgot about 
that option. Oh, yeah. 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 Life's not worth living at that point. Yeah. <laughs> what am I trying to live for? Right. It's not worth it. <laughs> I, I did say, like, we, we uh, recent, fairly recently did the episode uh, Not in My Backhoe. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the one with Drew Carey. Yes. And Dale and Bill get uh, trapped underground, semi-underground, in a pet cemetery because they accidentally dig their way in there with the backhoe without Hank's supervision. And I was, we were talking about, like, would you eat the person next to you if you had to? And I thought, if it was somebody I hated, I would. But if it was a celebrity, I definitely would. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, it's such a great answer. <laughs> so good. I ate Halle Berry. I ate her. I know. <laughs> This is, thought, this is really macabre. macabre. <laughs> Sorry. Macabre. I don't know why we keep going macabre. back to cannibalism. I think it's the pandemic. I think we're just like preparing ourselves just in case. That's, but that's it. Everything seems like it's going well. But, um. Are you getting enough to eat? <laughs> Honestly, no. <laughs> I could eat more protein. Yeah. And now I'm just like, good. babies. Okay. <laughs> I would eat a baby if I had to. <laughs> um. I don't know. What are your rapid fire questions? That was it. Just like, would you be the baby? That's it. That that was that was my question. Yeah, I know. I you had it. a different question. I didn't. I, it's gone. It's not true. It's gone. Sorry. Right. Well, that's nothing. Um, so yeah. we we lost the rest of our rapid fire questions, but you gave us a really good answer for the first one. What? Why? Um, can I ask you uh, about your glove? Oh, this is my drawing glove. Uh, <gasps> animators wear drawing gloves. We uh, have these stylus, you know, that slides uh-huh. across the screen. So, yeah. And it keeps you from like making marks on your screen with your like what the heat it's from your hands. Like, it, you know, it protects your, it, 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 it makes the drawing easier. Oh, okay. I had no idea. It's very stylish. Are there like drawing pants or shirts or anything? <laughs> <laughs> there should be. Then you could like get on all fours. Really good to tell. Yeah, they, 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 <laughs> the pants come, the pant come out to here. The drawing pants come out to right below the chest. You know? And yeah. uh, and then there's little suspenders. You know. <laughs> Sounds very nice. No shirt underneath, just high waisted pants, suspender, no shirt. But you have to wear band-aids over your nipples so they don't shave. <laughs> yeah. If you want to if you want to draw drawing on King of the Hill, you have to know anatomy and you have to be tidy mm-hmm. and uh, conscientious and you have to understand real world behavior. No. You have to have observational insight about uh, for instance, um, if there were scenes where people, a group were sitting down at a dinner table eating. Um, you, you need to have people with their hands on the table and the, the accoutrements on the table and their drinking glass and how that drinking glass and plate doesn't conflict with where their hands are and they have to be holding a wow. knife and fork and the baby has to be set just right on the plate, you know, if, if, it's <laughs> if you have a little arm or the foot or whatever. Um, and, Everyone knows you start uh, with the uh, feet and the hands, yeah. Yeah. work your way to work. It has to be consistent from scene, scene to scene. <laughs> scene, to scene. Is. And when someone speaks, and someone reacts, you can't have them react at exactly the same time that the other person speaks. You have right. to play it like life where someone speaks and then someone ha- has a moment to hear them and then reacts. I know. Wow. So, You've come such a long way from Rocky and Bullwinkle. Like. But, yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, if you want to draw and animate or direct and storyboard on King of the Hill and all that good stuff, you really have to think through the scenes and um, deliver like solid performance and, and staging. Well, that shows. It's kind of difficult finding people because, um, and this is not a knock on animation artists. There, there, there are just so many incredibly talented animation artists that are so, so good and much, much better than me. Uh, however, they do tend to fall into three or four different styles, and that would be like Disney, Cartoon Network, Warner Brothers, which are kind of overlapping, and uh, anime style, uh-huh. the kind of action anime sort of style. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they're also super incredible, but um, they don't they don't like to learn weird styles, you know, like the King of the Hill style. Um, I, like I remember when we started Simpsons, we had this problem where the Simpsons was kind of its own thing and we had some some good people come in, but they were drawing it in like a weird, like traditional Hanna-Barbera style or Warner Brothers style. And, you know, they, you have to be able to draw in the Mike Judd style. Well, there's that, I, and I've seen it going around the internet a lot. I think it's like this guide to drawing King of the Hill, and it looks like it yeah, was yeah. like, you for very specific. It was very specific. Yeah, yeah. It was like no overly yeah. bug eyes. That's no why over... we had to do that. That's yeah, exactly like, why we had to do that. Yeah, like wow. no crazy <laughs> expressions. Like, and, and, and Jackie right. and I have even mentioned, you know, just in the in retelling these episodes and having to watch them with like, you know, just like a closer eye as opposed to just putting it on the background. Like we're, we're reviewing it. We're writing notes on it. I've noticed like how 
just subtle facial expressions they look so realistic and it's such a big part of the humor or yeah. like uh you know just yeah. the paralinguistics play such a big role mm -hmm. just like somebody like kind of like squinting or something it's just yeah like... yeah it's very subtle and um very deliberate and on screen the smallest move will attract a lot so much attention if everything's not moving mm -hmm. yeah and and it's, it's tough to find people not only who who can do it but who want to do it because a lot of good artists they, they really look look um down on the style as being inferior and that um they don't they don't like it as much as they like uh you know the disney style or the cartoon mm -hmm. network style more cartoony style or the um or the or anime style i suppose king of the hell's the most similarity to anime so, that's um, what and people always say that king of the Hills is texas anime, anime. what is, I, I don't know what that means well, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not so, like they're so, flying so, through the air like sailor moon so anime is not a style and it's not a genre anime is a it's an art form uh that encompasses uh all the genres you know they okay. have the horror genre they have action they have comedy not much comedy but they do have mm -hmm. uh some comedy um but they they do their artwork in a, in a more observational kind of real world setting generally speaking there are also some cartoony animes that are very like simple and flat mm -hmm. and, and crazy but um yeah, most most of it is more, very much more real world than than the um, other American styles. Okay. Draw. Interesting. I had no idea. Yeah, I know that makes a lot more sense when somebody actually explains it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, season three at, at Matthew McConaughey is red. Yes, yes. And, was, and we talked about that episode, and it was incredible. That episode is so good because not only did we have Matthew McConaughey, but he was only in like a half of the episode. He wasn't even the main part to it, and it was still such an amazing That's episode. That's when Bobby marries Luann. That's when Bobby marries Luann. It's such a good episode. Yeah, that was so great. good. Yes, Brad the Bidet X. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was the, yeah. the correct pronunciation. Pronunciation is Thibodeau. Yes, yes. Right. but that's not sexy enough for Brad. <laughs> oh my God, we, we had Mary Tyler Moore on. Yes, yeah. Who, oh, there's so many amazing. celebrities in uh, season. Yeah, we had Eric Estrada. Eric Estrada. So judge no. number three. <laughs> Eric Estrada. <laughs> oh my God, we had Billy Bob Thornton. Yes, he killed a baby. <laughs> not to bring it back to that. Not to bring it back to killing babies, but it did. Yeah, he drowned oh, a baby. Yeah, I did. I too completely forgotten about that. I know. I, I'm telling you, you gotta rewatch the episodes in order. Every episode, you're just like, oh my god. Billy Bob Thornton knows me. Thank you. Uh oh, we're calling you out. I know that he listens. He does listen. Shame, shame on you. Shame on you. His his career wouldn't be anything without this King of the Hill. Obviously. Thank Appearance. you. <laughs> I've always said that. I've always said that. We've always said that. Mary, what? Did you know he listens? I mean, I'm guessing. We assume. What else is he doing? <laughs> yeah. What else is he doing? Billy Ray Casey. Yeah. Who well, else? He's, he's kind of in the doghouse because of what his wife did now, right? Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, she didn't Who's like at... Cummings? Huh? Oh, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> well, she's not, not as much as. Uh, Who's the other one? It was From... Aunt Becky, right? Yeah, Aunt Becky. From Full House. Or all, not all in the family, Jesus. <laughs> it's like the seventies. <laughs> well, thank God for Aunt Becky. Thank God for Aunt Becky for getting her kids in on lies. We and had Bert. a big acting crew too. We had all these female directors: Lauren McMillan, Cindy Ting, Trisha Garcia. Three female directors. I did notice like a lot of female names coming we up had this Adam season. Adam Kuhlman, Chris Muller. Chris Muller passed away from Lou Gehrig's disease. Oh God. Uh, a few, se several years ago. Oh. A while ago. Um, we had Jack Dyer, Sean Cashman. Jack was painting the ass. Sean Cashman, <laughs> did, uh, probably at uh, Disney TV or something. Now mm -hmm. he went over to the dark side. Oh, oh, is Disney the dark side? Yeah, of course it oh, is. Of course it is. I know it's the dark side. I know it's it is. Big, I think. Gary McCarver directed. He's retired now on the East Coast doing something. Jeff Myers. Jeff Myers is working on Disenchantment now. Oh, okay, cool. We could hide him away. I yeah, yeah, there you go. They're already doing it, but. You know, I'm like, I'll always be on Rick and Morty. Uh, years. Of course. Dominic. A hundred years. I bet, I bet we could get Dominic Chipolcino back. Dominic, of course. Let's do this. Let's bring them all back. Come on, hey, everyone. Molly, you won't, Dominic. Molly. That'd be great if, if, if I, you got me on here and I talked shit about animators and the animation community. You don't, you don't have to say anything. We'll do it. As the community. Like, yeah. The business. Come on. Yeah. We're trying to get people back. You it's an asshole. industry. It's an industry. It's a job. It's a job <laughs> creating <laughs> jobs. Yeah. You know, if you don't, then you're anti-American. <laughs> I'm going to be crucified now. Nope. Nope. 
We made you say this. <laughs> we'll cut it all out. We'll take the heat. Who are we? We're nobodies. We're nobodies. I'm joking. See, I'm all joke. Like to joke. <laughs> it's not just, ha ha, so we're just having a goof about. And no, it's all. I, mean, I like to joke, and I work in cartoons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> That'd be terrible, though, if, if, if uh, King of the Hill was, was not rebooted. Well, because of course. Because there's so much expectation. Well, you know. Right? We'll always have the fan fiction. We'll always have the fan fiction. The pornographic fan fiction. It's amazing. It's very sexy. It's really good. <laughs> Compelling. <laughs> Where do huh? Where do you find this stuff on Reddit? The internet. The internet. We just Google King of the Hill fan fiction, and some of them were so obscenely graphic that even Jackie and I couldn't read them. I mean, I could read it to myself right. in the privacy of my bedroom, <laughs> okay, I got, but I, got I got couldn't it. like look you in the eye and right. read it. But some some things we could. Yeah, it definitely brought us closer. Definitely. But <laughs> okay. On that note, I'm going to I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to look it up and, and yes. Cool. Trust me, you're going to be slipping and sliding all throughout your house. <laughs> <It's> very erotic. <laughs> is, there, is there like foam involved and stuff? Like sure. Kind of piles of like. There will be when you're done. There will be. It's just going to be a foamy mess when you're done. <laughs> yeah. Propane gas and. Yeah. <laughs> gas, but you're not proud of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't want to keep you, but I, I, my final question, uh, if you have anything like more to add, feel free, but my final question is any thoughts on Zack Snyder's Justice League? <laughs> Who? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And then that's where is we end it. <laughs> friends with JJ. Abrams, right? Abrams? Are they buddies? I feel like they would be, but I have no idea. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. Is he, did he do, did Zack Snyder do a Star Trek movie? <laughs> That's something we can look up. Hey Google, did Zack Snyder do a Star Trek movie? Yes, Zack Snyder is credited. Okay, okay, Google stop. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. Did. All right, figures. I saw a Star Trek movie that J.J. Abrams directed. I thought it was crap. Oh. Suck one, J.J. Yeah. <laughs> Suck oh it. Oh my God, it was so bad. It was the last performance, I think, of Leonard Nimoy. Oh, oh wow. I, I think I saw that. Yeah. I really didn't like it. Well, I like Leonard Nimoy. Like, yeah. I really didn't like the directing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the Wrath of Khan. Yeah, yeah. Do you recommend it? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a huge Trekkie, and yeah. I like, I like the television series, but I'm not a huge Trekkie as far as that goes. I haven't gone out of my way to see the movies. Fair enough. But I watched a little bit of Star Trek next June, and then liked it. Yeah, um, Patrick Dude. Stewart is, of course, a babe, and yeah, Nick Silver Fox. Fox. Silver Fox. <laughs> is there a cat near you? Yeah, he just wandered by. Oh, is that the tuxedo cat? Yeah, yeah, you saw me. That's the tuxedo cat. Yeah, where is oh. it? BB cat. Oh. Hey, well, I'm going to go eat my baked potato now. Thank you so much. All right, Wes, thank you so much. Have a good night. You too, and sorry if we destroyed any of your relationships with other emails. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to send you a